and how to do it, and which I'm going to let Devin talk to you about. Um, but I think it's something that TDAC should consider getting involved in. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, thank you. Um, so hello again, everybody. Um, and just to follow up really right on the tails of what Nancy has said, um, she has come up with a very interesting idea and my producer and I and Laura and Nancy have all discussed this uh, a number of times, but we feel that we um, have a really great funding strategy for the film, which again is a feature length documentary um, it's currently titled The Harvard Five, but that's just a working title because the film will really be about the town of New Canaan. Yes, the Harvard Five, but also, you know, the Harvard Six, Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten, Eleven, Twelve, 10, 11, 12, um, including amazing architects like John Black Lee, for example, um, who, again, I was able to spend a lot of time with on camera before he passed away. Um, so, so the New Canaan Museum and Historical Society has very generously offered to act as our umbrella partner as a 501c3 where any donations that are made to the film will be held in an escrow account by the museum and it will stay there until we have raised the complete budget which is 250,000 which is for a feature length documentary film. And I know that sounds like a lot of money and it is a lot of money, um, but in the, in the world of filmmaking, that's actually on the lower side of a budget, but we have crunched the numbers a zillion times and we can 100% we can make the movie happen for that amount. Um, so the plan that we've come up with is that we, we would like to ask 250 people for $1,000 each. And then we have our $250,000 budget. Again, the donation would go to the escrow account under the uh, Museum and Historical Society, so it's tax deductible. Um, and the, you know, the focus for me, or the passion for me, is not only in telling this in incredible story, which has crazy international interest in this moment right now, but anything that we film will also be given to the archives of New Canaan. So any footage of homeowners, any footage of the houses, um, any archival materials that we acquire and then we transfer, whether it's you know old Super 8 film footage, we get it transferred to digital, that will also go to the New Canaan Museum for the town's records, which in turn we hope will bolster and continue, or rather continue to bolster the interest in New Canaan modernism, but also might bring in scholars for some of the additional programs that Nancy has planned for the New Canaan Museum in terms of really trying to, to boost this concept of New Canaan as being um, an absolutely essential place for mid-century modern history. So the film itself will have legs that are international and media is absolutely, it's critical to any to anything that needs to get more attention. It's all about media these days. And the great thing about the internet is we now can have a digital film that we can show all over the world. We don't have to have it just in one movie theater and only in New Canaan. We can literally get this out to people across the universe. And I feel strongly that that will really, really, really help um, you know, drive tourism and development towards the town of New Canaan. And of course, we can tie into, as Nancy said, we are already planning to tie into October for Design and New Canaan Modern House Tour. Um, so that's that, you know, I'm looking at my, the time here at 7 11, and I don't want to chew your ears off, but I'm happy to um, answer any questions. Um, we, of course, would love to shout out to TDAC and hope they might become one of our founding um, sponsor partners. Um, and of course, you know, individuals, foundations, um, businesses who might be interested in participating in using this film, not only to tell a really fascinating, entertaining story, but also to help the town of New Canaan. And that is, I mean, that to me is equally important as it is to tell the, the story for entertainment value. So. All and what, what's your timing on all of this? I mean, I remember a few years ago, I saw bit, bits and pieces of what you'd already put together, but uh, what's your timing on the film, on completing the film? 
So what we what we've decided, Nancy and I and my producer, and I by the way, if we do have enough time, I'd love to show you the the trailer. It's uh, just two seconds under four minutes, so three minutes and fifty eight seconds. If we have time after we're done chatting, I'd love to show it. At the very least, I can send everybody the link. Um, so we've decided that we are going to give this an 18 month run with this new initiative for fundraising. And at the end of 18 months, if we do not have $250,000, the money will be returned to everybody. So again, it will be held in escrow um, during that period. Now, if we, if we raise $250,000 in 12 months, awesome, we're off to the races. If we raise $300,000 in 12 months, even better because you, you know, you, in filmmaking, it's always a balance, right? You have to have, you have to cut yourself off with time usually, but um, so that's why we've done that is the 18 month window to raise the 250,000 starting tonight. <laughs> but, but it's also Im important to note that this is sort of an all or nothing. And so that people that do donate are not gonna get half a project. They're, not, they're gonna get their money back or they're gonna see the film gets completed. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't want, you know, we we wouldn't do a half-baked project. So um, yeah, so that's why we've we've decided upon that policy. After 18 months, we don't have 250,000, money goes back to everybody who sponsored. EJ? Devin, I think, I think Tucker was also curious, like how long would it then, say you get the money, how long is it gonna take you to complete the project? We once, if we have, you know, with the 250,000, depending on the season, because I prefer not to shoot the houses in winter, even though they are dramatic, and beautiful, I just think you get even more of a sense of their beauty when you have more external elements to look at in the environment. So preferably shooting in spring, fall, summer is also fine. But I would say with that, with that said, we can, we would be able to turn the film around in um, seven to 10 months. Wow. So and, Tucker? Yes, Jack. So, um, you know, I just want to attest to the power of even the trailer that has been done. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did, you know, find that trailer and, and met Devin. And I've used that both in my, uh, my uh, driving tour to promote it, to send to people, to explain what New Canaan is about and also my real estate business. And as Devin said, there is crazy interest about our history uh, around the world. So this is, I think, one of the most effective tools that I have seen produced here. And I think it would be a great benefit to the town and the marketing of the town and the tourist development of the town and retaining our history by completing this film. I am in. Thank you, Jack. An endorsement for you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any comments, questions, ideas? I think what we're hoping to do is um, because we, we have a couple of funding requests before us. So I think rather than do them one at a time, we were going to have a discussion at the end of the meeting. But uh, does, is everyone OK with uh, four minutes quickly seeing the trailer? Or would you rather? Yeah, seeing heads not. OK. OK. Um, do I need to give you a? Uh, Screen share. Um, I suppose so. Although Tucker, I can um, I can send you the link if you want to do it. It's it's just in YouTube. Here, I'm just making you co-host. Okay, let me pull it up then. Can you go ahead and do it? First, now I have to figure out where I put it. Just give me one moment here. Sure. Here we go. And by the way, this can you see my? No, you can't see it yet. I'm not sharing. There we go. Nope. Sorry, one minute. Okay, we, we can do that there for a minute. Okay, yeah. How about now? Good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. we're not so seeing the whole screen though. Okay, that, um, let me hide this. Can you see the website, the Harvard Five with a yes. iconic photo that yes. Bell used? Okay, yes. Yes. that's my grandfather, by the way. Uh -huh. right. oh. Yep, and that's wow. my grandmother and that's, my mom, you can hardly see her, but there she is. And there's one of her uh, three brothers. So that's the Bremer house, which my mom grew up in. And I grew up, you know, spending every day in basically. 
Um, so this is the website, which is theharvard5.com and it's the word written out F-I-V-E. -F -F -E. So I'm going to now pull up the trailer, which is on YouTube and it starts right away. So I'm going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> our daughter first went to school and came and they were told to draw a picture of their houses Kathy came home she was crying and she said I'll never never draw another picture of what daddy designs never she said the teacher said those aren't houses Coming out of World War II, there was that sense that we can do anything. Now let's get our act together. We have economic prosperity, we have a land opportunity, we've got material opportunity, and we're the winners. We won World War II, here we go. Shortly after the war, you have a lot of people in architecture school at Harvard who were disenchanted with historical architecture. When Gropius and Breuer came, there were fresh breezes blowing through the school. Elliot Noyes was first, and then Breuer, Corey's, Johnson, and myself. I was the last. I remember visiting Elliot Noyes and a lovely house he had built already, and I was just stunned. There was no better place to go. Most people who move to New Canaan move here because it's a colonial town. And so the modern houses were threatening to them. The idea of this white Bauhaus type box appearing within this community with traditional houses and slope rooms, et cetera, was in fact quite a shock. They thought they were crazy. They said, let's get those boxes the hell out of here. Oh, intelligent people said, we don't need this. This is not New Canaan. Can you imagine a big square box going in among all the little colonial houses? I mean, it ruined the neighborhood. What you have to understand is was about a way of living. Well, it starts and ends with Martinez, I would suppose. The people who commissioned their houses not only wanted to build one of these modern houses, they wanted to enjoy the lifestyle that went with them. They had a hoot and howling good times. There was that sense of you work hard, you play hard, you get reward. Art is a reflection of who you are at that particular time in world history. These guys were not famous. They were experimenting, they were failing, they were out there in the wind. It was that sense of experimentation and life and fun that allowed them to do what they did. The exhilaration, the, the teeming of ideas, the imagination. And the irony was that it was a movement in such a traditional little town like the Kingdom. Maybe that's the best place to start. This, uh, where there'll be a little bit of opposition and you feel as if you're really fighting for something. It was such an exciting adventure, this revolution. Mm. Fabulous. Great. I love seeing Ruthie Smithers. I haven't seen her in a long time. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Wow. Oh, some, some of those people are just like, oh, my heart breaks to see them on film. I know. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me so too. Devin, if we can go back to the, just yeah, if you can take that off now, just so we can go back to see everybody. Yes. Okay, there we go. go yeah, there we are. Um, yeah, that's great. Gosh, takes you back. <laughs> so, um, like I said, does anybody have any other questions for Devin or comments or anything like that? We'll sort of review everything at the end, but I just want to uh, move this one along unless we have someone who has anything to say. Well, Fred, you're a star. We'll have to get your autograph. I know. Fred's a big star of this movie, I have to tell you. <laughs> Devin, what's so interesting about the film, we've been talking about mid-century modernism a lot with this group and 
the architectural significance, but what's so interesting, what you portray in the film is so culturally lively. It really, um, we, we haven't really talked about that legacy, but it is really, you really captured something um, that is a little bit of a time capsule, but it's, it's really um, wonderful to see. And, and, we, and we haven't made those connections as much in this group, but um, it's fun, it's really fun to see. Good job. Thank you so much. And you know, I have to say, I, I have to give credit to my mom because in 2006, she said, I don't know what's gonna happen. I know you're off exploring the South Seas and you're climbing mountains all over the place. And some of you who don't know me, my, my main business is actually in National Geographic filmmaking. So I do a lot of expedition um, filmmaking and I'm traditionally all over the world on boats and under in submarines and that sort of a thing. But she said to me, these people are not gonna be with us a whole lot longer. You've gotta just go and get them on camera now. You're a filmmaker, you'll figure it out. So we did start in 2006 and that's, um, and I, I always have to give mom credit for that. So that's how we have these amazing time capsule stories from John Black Lee, who probably, I mean, his stories and John Johansson's, you just can't get enough of them. They're just, they really paint the picture of what the life was like. And it's just so fun. It's so interesting and it's so culturally significant. So um, thank you for seeing that, Amanda. Anybody else got anything for Devin? Devin, you are welcome to, to stick with us as we discuss our other business, um, but you certainly don't need to be. Uh, it's up to you, but thank, thank you for being with us. And I, we'll I do have to get a couple more things accomplished this evening before okay. uh, checking out. So I will leave you all, but thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you. And, um, you know, my true hope is that this film when it gets made will will be a major um, calling card for the town of New Canaan and also major contribution to the archives and the history which is to me obviously so important and such Fair a part of my life having grown up in a noise house also right thank <laughs> right. you Thanks, Devin. thank you right. thank you Devin. Bye, everybody Thanks. thank you thank you um, I'd like to now go to uh, our last meeting we broke out into working groups if you will and everybody's been <clears throat> Uh, doing their jobs. Um, so Nancy, do you want to start with Otocast and tell us where we're at with that? You're muted, Nancy. Sorry, Nancy. You're muted. Sorry, my phone had been ringing, so I put it on mute. Um, so here's the thing with Otocast. Greg and Karen and I talked and brought in Laura from the chamber and Tucker, and we thought, let's just put something together quickly with Eric so that you could see what it could be. Um, here's the thing, Eric can do just about anything. So what we're gonna show you is super basic. It was just kind of a map with some pins for culturally significant places in Duquesne. But he has all kinds of marketing strategies. You know, you go and get a, the badges. He can promote individual events. So for example, for the Museum and Historical Society, when October for Design comes around, he can do a whole kind of push around that. He can work with all of our um, websites and social media, lots of stuff. But this was just kind of a quick, let's see what it would look like. So I'm assuming Tucker, you've got yeah. that? Uh, let's see, you mean uh, got it which way? What do you mean? I mean, if you go on the- I just um, watched it on my phone. So it's an app. Right. And, uh, but I think you can also go just to the internet I thought he had sent it to you. I'm sorry. Wait, hold um, on. Hold on. Uh, let me just check. You think he sent it to my town email from Eric? Yeah, I thought he did. Um, if you if you download the app and uh, allow it to say where you're from, uh, New Canaan pops up right away. So you right. can look at it on your phone. Let me just see if I can find it here for you. Having used it for the sculpture trail that the land trust put together, it was fantastic. Like I would be walking with my dog in various locations and I would put up, pull up that autocast and I could hear from the artist uh, on what he or she had created and 
their process, et cetera, et cetera. It, it was a pretty sassy app, I have to say. It was, and it was super easy to use. So he also, um, uh, Nancy, that's his voice in it, right? You yeah. said you put that so in what there. happened was he wanted, um, he wanted Greg and Karen and I to do a little audio recording and none of us did it. So he set it up with a placeholder. Obviously we have to figure out what we're going to say and sub it in. But um, it was, it, this was really just a bit, I mean, we, he, we literally sent him our Dropbox on Saturday and right. he put this up on Monday with just the idea because we think it would be a very exciting thing for the town. We think that um, certainly the chamber can use it to promote businesses. We think that there might also be individual businesses that want to get on it. And we, I'm quite confident, and I think Karen, you can, Greg can nod or, or shake your heads, but I think we're pretty confident that a lot of the cultural organizations are going to want to put pins and sign on. Um, the other thing is you may recall from his presentation that it's really inexpensive. It's like $100 a pin. Right. So, you know, even if the historical society decided to have pins for their off campus sites, you know, we're like all in for $400. So it's, it's really reasonable. So I don't have it. I don't have it in email form. I, as I say, I only have it on my phone. I don't know how I could, um, let me see something share okay. that because I have the app. Yeah. I think if you go on autocast.com, you oh, can get right? it anyway. All right. Let me see. Um, all right, let me put in New Canaan locations. But is our New Canaan locations, are they live? Yes. Yeah, they are. They are. All right. Yep. Um, let's see. Our guides. Where do you search? Where's the search function? Uh, North Carolina. Nope. Wrong place. Hold on. New Caney, Connecticut. I found it. All right, let's see if I can get this going. Let me share my screen. Uh, is this actually, well, the, uh, I don't know if I'm in the right place, Nancy. I've got a lot of the pictures that were submitted. It should be, if you go onto the, if you go onto the website, there's on the three little search bars on the right, you can click on locations. Yeah. And then I then you have a choice. Uh, I am not, I don't see three. I, I don't see that up here. All right. Well, I guess we're going to have to have everybody take a look themselves because. So, yeah. Uh, so what, what we'd like you to do, we're not asking you all to do anything tonight other than um, have a look at it. Our goal again is to use this as a tool in our tool belt, if you will, for business recruitment. I mean, this is certainly something that, um, as we heard from Eric, that is uh, with the badges and all that, that is an attraction, if you will. Um, when we spoke with it, well, Laura and I still have work to do in putting in sort of town assets. But uh, you, I would assume this would be part of October for Design, Nancy. I mean, you would make this, well, this- Well, that, I, th I, think the, I think the hope is to get this up and live with as many organizations, Eric can continue to, to add people so there's no it's not like there's a finite time okay and then the question is going to be you know karen was talking about and greg was talking about well when they reopen would they do some kind of a launch that would drive traffic or you know we'll we'll try and do it for the historical society when we have events or in october but i think the idea is to get it up so that new canaan has a, a map Right. And um, people can continue to work on it and improve it. And it can hold video, it can hold audio, it can hold, you know, endless numbers of pictures of everything. So um, I think we Laura, just start what building. You, what do you think, Laura, in terms of the stores? I mean, I know how hard it is. Um, I know when you did your video campaign for the holidays, um, it's hard to get the stores thinking about this. Do you think, or the restaurants? I mean, what do you think? Do you think that that would be something that would appeal to them? I think we would have to position it as like a restaurant crawl or, you know, just saying to them, oh, put your stuff up there, I don't think would be appealing. I think we would have to create sort of a structure around it. And it could be, you know, let's, let's, let's have one whole subject be New Canaan restaurants. Um, and, you know, 
I, I think that would be the only way and they would all have to buy in for $100 and, and we could, you know, kind of get a theme to it. Um, I noticed on the sculpture trail one, when you clicked on it, you first went to an ad for William Ravis. Hmm. So it looks like, you know, you know, maybe we could get a sponsor. Right. That then, then there wouldn't be any cost at all. And we, we wouldn't even really have to get the restaurants involved uh, in, in any way, with the exception of feeding us uh, some content. Um, so, I mean, so I, I think, you know, that's a possibility. So any of you that represent organizations that you think might want to be part of this, I mean, the initial work is done and that the Dropbox is set up and uh, who do we have on there? We've got Glasshouse, Grease Farms, you, Nancy, the town, you being the Chamber. museum and historical society. Um, but we'd love to get more. I mean, I'm thinking, I know one of the things that people have asked me over the years back when I was at the chamber and, you know, everyone loved the idea of a gallery night or gallery walks. You know, we've got so many galleries that that would draw people to town and that could tie in with a restaurant thing. I mean, do you think it's really event driven though? Do you think it's more of a, like a Cinco de Mayo kind of thing or, a one-off or do you, do you see it as being something that we could use that would span the period of a couple of weeks? Well, I, if you talk to Eric, what he would say is when, when we first started this, this group two years ago, we were looking at like, what are the annual events in New Canaan? And there was a zillion of them. Right. And so he was saying, you know, if you have your map up, if you have your, all your critical locations, then you can, you know, tinker with stuff that's event driven. Right. But um, it still exists. And so anyone that's, and who knows? I mean, he was saying sometimes people now on Otacast are just searching through places and they're like, oh, this looks interesting. Maybe I'll come. So um, I do think it's important to be up and to have a good presence. I mean, the museum needs to work on, on its stuff. And I think um, Greg and Karen would agree that they, we all have work to do on, on how we want to present the organizations and you know, interesting content, that kind of stuff. But I think that if we if we can build the infrastructure and have that map and then figure out, okay, you know, do, do we want to have a, I don't know, what was John Johansson's line? It begins with an ends with a martini. Do we have a martini crawl? And then yeah. that's the thing that the restaurants all want to glom onto or something like that. And then, and then we all push that. So I think if we can get it built, then um, either our little subcommittee can continue brainstorming around it or we can bring in more people that might have ideas. I mean, I think the low hanging fruit would be restaurants and galleries for starters in terms of sort of the retail presence, if you will. Because I do want us to really be focused more on the downtown and we're gonna hear from the whole empty storefront group too. But um, we've done a lot of work around the cultural pieces of everything that's happening in and around New Canaan. Uh, we've, we've got some work to do on the actual downtown piece of it. So, um, all right, well, let's let the working group, um, you know, get back to work on that. Let us know. I know Laura and I have work to do in getting our, our uh, information loaded on the, on the site. Um, and then just if you guys could let us know what is next in terms of do we need to be going out there and asking others to join us? I mean, do we do dividing up lists? How, how do you want to work it? Well, we can brainstorm. It would be really helpful if everybody on the group just looked at the app and saw how it worked. And, you know, you can even look at the stuff that we have, understanding that it's not perfect or polished and send any comments. Um, and yeah, then Greg and Karen, we can get on an email and figure out a time to chat. Okay. All right. So that's everyone's homework in the next couple of days is download the app and have a look at it. And then we'll, we'll talk further. Um, Dan, did you have a question? Yeah, I do have a question. One is, can uh, we, can you re-clarify the app by name so we can find it? Yeah, O-T-O-C-A-S-T. -O 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 okay. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, then I just had another idea, and Nancy, I'd be glad to work with you on it, is maybe if we could find some, someone either at the store or the restaurant level that is a true participator and is likes to be a pioneer on something new and exciting, and maybe because they have the appetite for it, maybe we could help them develop what that um, app could look like. Mm -hmm. And then we could then take it to other restaurants or other retail operations and say, this is the first prototype that we've developed with the owner of their business. And I think for a retailer or a restaurant, they, you know, they don't have the creative juices to know what to do or how to do it, but maybe we could develop something 
with one person who's willing to work with us that we could then use that as a prototype to kind of market it to either retail to all that. Cause I think sometimes people can't get their head around how could I do it for my business? Does that make sense? That's yeah, I'm wondering, yeah. I'm wondering, Laura, if maybe the Adirondack store would that's be- in mind for me. Yeah, because that's more of an experience, right? You, we could go through the store. I know they were very eager to get involved in the holiday yep. doors project that you did. They might be, um, this might be right up their alley. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you did a great job for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, uh, it could be a senior internship project to gather the data, mm -hmm. you know, because all the content is out there. Uh, I, you know, uh, uh, everyone's website has who they are, you know, all the links, all that sort of stuff that, you know, could gather it and, and get it uploaded. Um, you know, I, I think that would be, would be easy because the content exists. It's just cultivating it and getting it one place and packaging it as a new Canaan restaurant experience. That would be a great senior internship program. Okay. All right, so that's how we're gonna move forward on that one. Working groups, Amanda, you wanna tell us about the empty storefronts, what, what work has been done there? Sure, um, BJ and Jack and uh, Laura and Tucker, um, uh, all kind of walked the town quickly, just as a reminder. I mean, we all know the town well, but um, it was great to, to walk and talk and observe. Um, and then we met uh, Tuesday night and Alan joined us and um, we brainstormed a little bit further um, since our last meeting. Um, and I, I don't know, BJ, do you wanna uh, step in and compile some of our our thoughts? Sure, definitely. Um, we kind of merged, I would say that we kind of merged both the empty storefronts with the uh, concept of who would go in those stores. So we um, did a nice job of understanding the storefronts and what we might have as a challenge there. And then we moved on to think of, um, you know, what could be uh, new stores that we could attract. So there was a real, um, it was a really nice to have everybody kind of get involved because we had Jack who was able to kind of give a commercial real estate view of it, which was so helpful. And then, um, you know, we would love to uh, reach out to you Brock and discuss a little bit more about commercial and what um, is happening. There were a couple of things that came out which were um, the relationship of taxes, the ability to attract people, the um, idea is the rent too high. We tried to kind of get those pain points out and into our discussion and that we found to be very helpful. But we also kind of wrapped around the idea of we're such a unique and special town. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, these things are happening. And yes, that might turn a person away. Um, but we did talk about individual um, shop owners. We talked about micro chains and how we've been very successful with micro chains. And we're excited to talk a bunch about that. Um, and then we did get into talking about things that our town is missing. And, you know, we talked about a cheese shop. We're excited about the bakery that came in. We would love to have a dog groomer. What about a watch repair? There were, these are like little more micro businesses as opposed to who would take a larger space. Um, but we did go down a quite a bunch of the different um, stores and we talked about unique types of ways to coordinate businesses. You know, we've looked at provisions, which is down on Pine and how they've grouped together a number of businesses under one roof. And we did get to talking about, oh, are there, is there going to be any um, movement on 
groups of business into like a WeWork situation. Mm -hmm. So we kind of had a little bit of a discussion there. Um, Laura, you talked a little bit about hard data, needing the data to help drive some of our conversation. We don't really have it. We have some great, fantastic data that you guys collected at the chamber, which was um, some anecdotal, but some quite real, uh, what are the empty storefronts? And we talked about that being around, I think you said seven to 8%, right, Laura? Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, just understanding how fluid that can be. You know, right now it's seven to eight, but in the spring that could disappear, you know, part of that could disappear and we'd be back to our four or five where we normally would be. Um, and then um, we talked about PR ideas. We were so, so happy to have Alan in the group. Um, and she talked about a couple of different marketing ideas, um, PR ideas about how to attract the businesses and what might attract the businesses, which was, which was really great. And um, so I think we've moved on a lot of our different points. We didn't get down to the brass tacks of how are we going to put the, uh, exactly what we were gonna be putting on those uh, walls, on the windows, um, but we figured that's, that's gonna come. We almost wanted to have this discussion to be able to kind of get it out and be able to see how we're all feeling. So um, what else did I leave out there, Amanda? Well, I um, just on the subject, is that an echo? I hear an echo. On the subject of um, what to do now with the windows, um, there was a lot of discussion about various alternatives. Um, and it's really more of a window dressing, if you will. Um, to create some continuity, the possibility of using that window dressing or graphics to market the town. Um, and maybe from one empty storefront to another, there's some continuity, but there's an opportunity to, for the, some unique aspect so that um, there's some uniformity. Um, and we also talked about how given the, art culture in and around our community through Silvermine and the Carriage Arts Barn and the numerous artists in this region, how we could also develop um, possibly a either a volunteer program or some kind of a means of connecting landlords with artists and artists could maybe take over the storefront uh, on a temporary basis with some, some degree of uh, regulation or censorship to uh, make sure that we don't get crazy craziness, but that, that there's some visual um, energy in these windows. Um, and uh, Alan, why don't you talk about the article that you sent out hmm. um, that, that uh, is a case study in Southampton. Yeah, what Southampton is doing is they're um, just in a nutshell, having all the empty storefronts have artwork in them so that when people go down the street, it's not just a for rent sign, but actual artists, local artists. And it's, it's a beautiful representation of the town. And while it, it takes your mind away from the fact that there's so many empty storefronts and putting it on, onto something else. And they're also, if I... I remember correctly, they're requiring the stores to do this, or they're they're going to uh, fine them if they don't do something like this. So yeah, okay. there was a fine. Yeah. yeah. So if uh, I think I think how it worked, I think there were two examples. One in San Francisco, of course, a very different kind of uh, situation, and one in Southampton. And in Southampton, if the storefront remained empty for a certain period of time. Um, a fine could be uh, levied on this landlord unless they agreed to have an artist take over for a period of time, something like that. Wasn't that the case? Some, something, I can, I can send that article to the whole group if everyone would like to see yeah. that. That was it. It's interesting. I mean, I, I just think about the whole mand mandated piece of that, how you do that. I mean, does that require 
you know, an ordinance or does that require planning and zoning to get involved? Yeah. Um, and they, and in the article, they said they never collected any tax yet. So <laughs> I don't think the hard part had really come yet. Right. Interesting. But hey, we've got, we've got so many great artists, um, amateurs and professionals in town and there could be some really creative stuff going on. Um, you know, you could see how that could get a little um, non-uniform and maybe the quality might not be as high consistently. So that's where we thought maybe a consistent kind of graphic signage that had, I, I just, I just printed off, these are, these are kind of corny, but I'll just put them up to my screen. Um, this was right off the internet, you know, like a little streetscape with people walking. And here's another one with a bunch of people walking and there was no, no value placed on right. either of these, but the idea of having maybe a eye level band across that maybe has some recognizable New Canaan, maybe the glass house is there and maybe the clock in front of, um, what is, is it in front of Polo? Yeah. And, and, and maybe Grace Farms, the swirl is there and, um, and a mid-century Elliot Noise house is there. And, you know, so I think it could be a really neat way to remind people that this is this great cultural town that has all these other things to offer. Offer, And so what if there's some empty storefronts? We're going through a pandemic, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway. I um, had a local artist uh, approach me, uh, you know, because we've had a couple people come up to our office and say, oh, what are you doing about the empty storefronts? And, you know, she, she would be happy to be commissioned at, you know, three or $400 dollars a store uh, maybe four, four and up a little bit that she would totally create a, a escape now that may be too expensive for uh individual landlords but you know I, I think uh, to your point amanda the talent is here and we should be able to get something done that that gives us some uniformity and it doesn't just feel so russian supermarket when you walk past with you know stuff uh falling on it I do like the idea of the the banner maybe at, at a certain level because um, I know some of the building owners like for people they when the when it does become vacant they go in and they strip it and they put great lighting up and they redo the floors and paint so that people can see the possibilities and I think that's part of the feature or the selling point if you will that they can actually someone were driving by passing by walking by could actually look in and say wow look at that space that could be a perfect cheese shop, if you will. Um, so to, to cover the glass entirely, I know that's the typical practice is when you're, when you've moved into a, a build, uh, into a space and you're fitting it out that you put up all the brown paper to make it feel a little bit mysterious back there. But I like the idea. I would think that some of the property owners would like to know that they could keep that part of it visible. Uh, I don't know. I, I could be wrong on that, but it seems right. to be. And, and to Laura's point, commissioning an artist, um, to do kind of a streetscape, let's say, and to have a portion of it that's replaceable. Right. And the, the particular landlord could request a certain something or there's something unique about each one, but there's something that ties them all together. I, I, I've seen this mainly in Europe when they're redoing these old buildings and rather than have just the awful scaffolding which you always see in new york city they basically put a thin overlay of it of what the finished product is going to look like mm -hmm. and i have no idea the expense on that but that could be kind of fun maybe this artist could do that so i mean the i think the most inexpensive way to do this is to come up with some design you know that we we all agree thinks represents what what we're trying to do here and just get it printed. As I, I think I reported back at the last meeting that I did have one landlord who I was having to call because I thought the, the, the shape of his windows were hurting other businesses around it. And he was actually really embarrassed about it. He doesn't live here and he apologized and he offered to help fund it uh, within reason. So um, I, think, I, I, think the, I think we've got a lot of ideas here, but I think the simplest and easiest, because we're going to get some that would go for being commissioned, and there's going to be others that are saying, I'm losing a lot of money right now. Uh, 
I'm not into that, but if, if you could provide me with a roll of this paper, I'm happy to put it up as long as I can still have my for rent sign. And so I think we could probably do a little bit of both. Dan, did you want to say something? I saw you raised your hand. two things that, that came to mind. Um, Amanda, it was similar to what you spoke to, is at one time I commissioned um, Katie Milan to do uh, artwork for me when I was putting together um, a item. I'm gonna to try to show you this one item that we have here. We did a dish that actually had uh, black and white um, artistry of different buildings within the town. And she's also done ornaments for me where we had those commissioned, but something like that where we could take these graphic images, blow them up and if it's each one on separate windows with maybe a little caption of what it is, mm. what the history of it is all about. That's that's an idea. The other one that I had that which actually I thought they did a beautiful job. And anybody who uh, shops at the Walgreens down, you know, um, town, Walgreens, actually, if you remember when they opened, they had ugly, ridiculous windows that looked at the back of the um, display units that they had in the store. Then what they did is they came up and they came up with beautiful um, kind of vintage photographs of New Canaan from the Texaco station to, you know, maybe the, the front of a, a pharmacy, but it was all New Canaan related. And I think my vision would be the same idea, but customized to, you know, the team's um, agreement that we could create these, if it's a wallpaper or a graphic um, piece, even if it's a banner that you could put in the window that is really um, sophisticated, you know, uh, aesthetically uh, attractive, and we can recycle them and use them throughout other locations. And it would draw the attention to just beautiful vintage pieces. And then, you know, I didn't, you mentioned it, we could incorporate some of the great architecture of homes and things that uh, we are very proud of. So it doesn't have to just be landmarks, but other pieces. So they were the two ideas that I had um, and we could try to capitalize on our talent and some of some of our great imagery that we currently probably own within the town. Is and that so artwork that you have, uh, the Katie Milan artwork, is that, who owns that? Do you own that? I actually bought it from Katie. So, and I would reach out to her again and ask her and share it with the committee to look at it. We've done some other, I've done some things that are in color mm -hmm. um, and knowing her, she some of it can be extracted and printed up. Um, she's done Waveney, she's done other pieces. Um, I'd be glad to show you everything that I have and own, more than welcome to use it. Um, and, or if we wanted to commission somebody to do it, she may volunteer to do something for us. Yeah, I think, um, well, I, I don't know if right now is the forum to get into the details of it, but I, I do think that it has to be graphically really bold because it operates on two levels. It operates on the street level, walking right past it, but it also has to communicate something to passersby in their car so that they might, you know, get out, park and get out of their car. Um, so, um, you know, I, I think that there's some work to be done on it. And I, oh, I, 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 I think that, you know, I, I do think it's an, an opportunity to market the town though. Um, and that there can be some images of some of our noteworthy um, uh, icon icons of, of art and architecture, you know, um, done in a maybe even a playful way. Um, you might you might think about talking to Cameron Dayton, who did for her um, senior AP design class. She did these very uh, graphic colorful line drawings of all the modern architecture from Grace Farms and the high school um, to the Gorius Pavilion. And there, then she has these wild colors. So it, it, mm -hmm. we have one at the Historical Society. We gave her a show at the Gorius Pavilion of it. So I don't know if any of you saw it a couple of years ago, but her stuff is fantastic. And that would be speaking to Amanda, what you're talking about, because the, they're really like line drawings within these pops of color. So they are visually simple, but beautiful. Yeah, I, I just we, want to get us moving on this. I, I want us to be able to 
sorry, Greg, I interrupted you. No, I was just going to say, I think that it would make sense to get some feedback from uh, landlords and see what they think about the concept. You may, you know, get a uh, hard no from some of them. I, I've spoken with okay. three or four um, who all seem open to the idea. The first topic that I brought up with some of them was the idea of nonprofits going in there. And I actually had some pushback on that only because they said, what if I don't philosophically align with a certain nonprofit, you know, who gets to choose it? And then when we talked about just um, putting artwork in there or, or, or even a nonprofit again, you know, well, I might want to be in that prime location. Why'd you put me over here in the corner? When Laura and I do the gingerbread houses, the little gingerbread houses that the kids do, we get parents who call up saying, I don't want to be down on, you know, at Chicken Joe's. I want to be right in front where Ralph Lauren is for my little house. So I don't want to, that's why I, I was hoping that it was something consistent and, and similar so that there's none of that, right? And, but I do think it needs to, the messaging needs to be spot on. And the other aspect would be maybe we earmark a portion of the TDAC uh, budget to underwrite uh, the type of artwork we think would be appropriate. If it doesn't already exist, yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, and the printing costs, because that, that's what that I was thinking. Yeah. Well, well, so that's that's what I'd like to know is, is maybe in the next couple of days, BJ, if you could get us some ideas yeah. of what, you know, a role of something might be like. Well, I know what the banners typically go by, you know, the, the two by threes and that kind of thing. I mean, they're roughly about $125 each for color. Um, but I, I'd love to know that. And I'd love to think that we could hone in on design sooner rather than later so that we can, we can make this happen. Um, I do like your idea of not blocking the entire window. Yeah. But having it more like a band because of just that, the looky lose. You want them to be able to look in. And part and parcel of all of this is that we would say to each building owner that, uh, we're not trying to hide anything. I mean, we're, we're trying to, uh, what started a lot of this was the fact that some of these buildings are, these windows are empty Coke bottles and pizza boxes. You know, they had a crew in there working and it's just, it's not showing the building in the best way and the best light that it could possibly be shown. So the, this is a 36 inch uh, yep. height, yep. which would, um, you know, eye level and down to your, the bottom of your torso. Yeah, which allows you to kind of see underneath and see above. I, right. I think that like a 36 inch roll could be about the right height. All right, BJ, will you get us some pricing? Okay, good. Tucker? Yes, Brock. Um, where do we stand with the biggest offender of a stretch of windows that is, you know, you spoke with the landlord 40 days ago, he took note nothing's changed it looks well, horrendous still so well, he, where he, we stand with getting some movement on that stretch of windows he improved two of the three there's there is a problem still with the third and i can't figure out why i ended up speaking with all of his uh building okay. folks and i'm not sure what the problem is there um i mean we're trying to help him too, help them too and i think but, everybody's brought these great ideas they have to to, you know, and I think some effort the on their side too. that you're speaking about, I think would be receptive. To, I mean, I know he is, he, he's, he's offered to, to help us with this, but I think that's a perfect example, right? We've been waiting and waiting to get improvement on there. If we had this role or whatever available to us, we could have gone to him months ago and sure. said, here it is. Uh, I know the old Hamptonite store across from um, up by consider the cook and what have you on the other side of the street. They had for a year the old um, newcomer's house tour from the holidays a, a year before, and it was still up in the window. You know, you can win this car. It was driving me crazy. So I think that's the whole point is if we had this available, readily available to be able to give to them when a store goes out, um, I think it would be helpful. So I, I don't want us to waste any time. I want us to get it going so that we can go after folks like that and say, look, we have it. We want you to use it. We don't really have any teeth. We can't really force anybody to use it. I mean, we could eventually, I guess, if we went through the process, but right now we can say, this is what we want you to do. And we're asking for your help. So but they'd still have to clean up. I mean, if you're talking about sure, Coke bottles and pizza bo boxes, they still have to clean up whether there's a banner or not. 
Exactly, but I'm thinking the whole banner would almost, um, the, the whole idea of them putting a banner in there would, they take maybe a little more pride in it and it would get cleaned up. Okay. And again, we'd have to police some of this or follow up. I mean, Laura and I did that when, when we were, when I was at the chamber and we'd go and, and knock on doors and try to do what we could do. But um, I really think we need to move on this one. So I'd love to, I'd love to get something going. So how do we, how do you think we decide, Amanda, on some sort of a design? I mean, do we, do we start by looking at what we already have? Um, I love Cameron Dayton's idea. I, I think, Dan, your, uh, the, the, what you have is also um, helpful. Should we, should we just start submitting some of this to, to, uh, you know, by yeah. email? Well, I wonder, um, Greg and Karen, whether you have any line drawings, really simple line drawings of, well, I know Greg, you do. I've, I know I've seen them somewhere. Um, I, I wonder if we could kind of reproduce them at the same kind of appropriate scale, kind of at eye level. And, um, and I don't know, I, you know, without spending a lot of time on it, but maybe graphically, they, they all get kind of a color of some kind. And um, so that it's, it's changing and, and other people can recommend other, uh, other buildings or, or objects, uh, maybe Waveney House, you know. Um. And maybe Nancy, you could share with us um, this other person who you said had splashes of color and that type of thing. Yeah, I mean, she's she's done now. Laura Plod knows her better than knows the family oh, better than me. Yeah, I, I I know them too. Yeah, um, what she's done is what you're talking about. She's done these line drawings that then have almost like '60s color, you know, kind of day glow colors. Uh, and um, they're, about they're four inches high, right? Um, Twenty-four by thirty-six, maybe. Maybe they can be blown up. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know that Jean McDonough at the high school had them all printed for her at Costco for her show. So I think you could get them done at whatever. Well, so she we probably has already. The but body. we'd have to get her permission, and I guess Absolutely. that's the issue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that um, that would be wonderful, and we could do a tester, you know, just to see how it looks. Well, b before, I mean, I'm, I've been advocating for this, but now I'm hearing that maybe she won't agree. So we, we'll have to reach out. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, no worries. Oh, you don't think, Laura, you don't think she'll agree? Are you asking me, Laura Pla? Yeah, I thought you were. Okay. No, 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 no. Well, we've asked, we've asked, um, there's a couple of things I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of um, Katie Milland, but also, Cameron Dayton, she's hard to get a hold of and we've been asking for a while to work with one of her pieces and have sort of fallen on deaf ears. So I don't know. And then there's also this great um, gal who did a lot of work for us and the Glass House for Find Philip. So, you know, there's definitely people out there who know this town and know this architecture and know this art who we can tap into. Cameron, yes super cool like her stuff is great she may not respond so let's just have plan b i guess yeah. the other person that actually could be a plan b is is mark markiewicz who is oh, president. True. he's done he has done drawings of virtually every building he has a whole series just on waveney i mean of homes of buildings of all kinds of stuff and they're beautiful and i'm sure he would say yes so I'm imagining that it might say something like explore new Canaan or the yeah. town of, because I, I would hate for it to look like there was a picture of Grace Farms on some building. People are like, oh, they're taking over this or mm -hmm. the same situation for anybody else. Right. I agree on that with that. Yeah. No, there, the, unfortunately, Tucker, I know it makes sense to move quickly on this, but I think it needs to be done right. Because I know I, I, I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. to create confusion to as opposed to right because this okay. is a really great marketing opportunity and and we haven't even really discussed what what our motto is or i mean we've had lots of thoughts about that but this is almost an opportunity to to launch that it's almost an opportunity if we were going to think about autocast i mean there's something about like okay what do i do oh wow that's a beautiful drawing of glass house what do i do with this you know what's what's the what's the um you know what's our tagline like what what's yeah, the, uh, it'd be like a little thing download the app future whatever it might be 
Uh, right, Amanda. So, Jack. Amanda, I just wanted you know, to to get a quicker launch. Um, you know, we have all of these. Uh, you know, we have art galleries in town, and they could probably benefit by exposing some of their in-house, you know, artists there or people they can bring in. So I think for two reasons, to benefit their businesses, which we're trying to do, and also for a quick launch, a variety. They don't have to all be windows with artwork, but I think that that could be something that would be helpful to at least talk to some of these galleries to find out what they, what they have and whether they would be interested to promote that. And then secondly, we talked about, um, you know, I, the nonprofits, after we had met very quickly uh, at the Wave Building, I encourage you all to look at the window. It just went in. I saw uh, it. A, no, a nonprofit called Live Free. And uh, I thought the window treatments were fabulous. And uh, uh, I, he was so excited to come in and to promote his nonprofit. And I think he would actually come here to, to talk to us about what it means to be able to get this window space in space. The landlord was also very receptive. And, and the agreement is, is that as soon as somebody uh, you know, comes, they will, they will exit. So uh, you have great windows. Uh, you have somebody in there that's generating traffic. And uh, you know, it, 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 uh, the going the nonprofit route could be a, a great way to fill the windows and the stores and bring some activity to the town. I did notice that them in there today, Jack. It does those window yeah. what they've got hanging there looks really nice. The other piece right. of this that we they're very much what Amanda just mentioned. Yeah, uh, the other piece. And, and of this, Tucker, yeah. Could I just ask you one thing? I sent you the press release just before the meeting. I just got it. That maybe you could send that press release to everybody so they could see it. Sure. You, you don't even know you got the email. I just sent it to you before the meeting. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, sure. I'll okay. send it on to everybody. Um, the Thanks. other piece of this that that we also need to spend a few minutes talking about is is how do we recruit you know businesses uh, to come to town? I mean, I know those of you in the real estate business are actively doing it, and and we all hear of things uh, here and there, and think of new concepts that would be um, complementary to what we already have, but. I know Laura and I have struggled with this over time and, and there's software programs that we vetted and, and we tried to bring one to town and, and I can't remember Laura what the cost was where we went to each one of the landlords and asked if they would want to partner with us on it and we got no reaction whatsoever. So there's that piece of it too and I don't really know how we can um, go about that as a group or, or what our marching orders should be in terms of trying to recruit businesses here that we think would be an addition to our town. So, and I don't think we're gonna answer that tonight, um, but it's something that we all need to be thinking about. And I know, you know, Brock, Jack, you guys in the real estate field, I'm sure are thinking about it all day, every day. But I have heard the good news is that things are picking up. Um, there's activity, right? I mean, are you both agreeing that people are are coming around and? Yeah, at least they're looking. They're looking. That's a good mm -hmm. sign. What yep. seems to be the um, uh, is, is price sort of the the, the number one question? Or are they looking for the right space? Or what are, what are you finding in the folks that are looking? Well, I do think price is is important, and I discussed this with with our group that um, the Ionazos did reduce their price, you know, of the wave, which uh, did attract has attracted a lot of people. So price is a factor. Mm -hmm. um, location is is really important, and just going to what Brock was saying, I mean, the appearance of the town is so critical when you bring somebody in, and you're trying to explain this wonderful thing that can happen here with commerce mm -hmm. and you look across the street and it's not good so um you know trying to correct that what you're trying to do but tucker the thing that i also you know it's really important for me to be able to refer these people and you know i do it all the time to you and laura to you know get the the, the, the last bit of you know statistics or excitement or you know um you know i think that that's important it's very important when i tell people that we have an economic 
development officer. I mean, that's like. Or, I'm not or, an economic development. What officer. are you? What are you? I don't be the same. I'm an administrative <laughs> officer for the town. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought it was economic. No, I am not the. I am the administrative officer for the town. One of my responsibilities of many is that I'm with an eye to, towards economic development because that's obviously one of the reasons that um, that, oh. that I took the job coming from my chamber time but i know uh -huh. we do not have it and that's that's a that's a really important point is that we i think we heard that and and all of you that sent me your sort of definitions of economic development i mean it does it, it takes stanford has three full-time people that are doing this on a regular basis mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. all they do so so when i say to a person or a client that we even have tdac Mm -hmm. You know, that, that this town is interested in yes. developing successful businesses. And I do still give them your name and, and Laura's. I mean, I think that that's import, important. Um, hold on, sorry. Well, I think between TDAC, the chamber. Well, it all fits together. So yes. whatever we can do as. But I think that's where this group can be really helpful. You all are seeing, hearing things, yeah. um, traveling that kind of thing. So it's all hands on deck, if you will. But there should be, and I think that, that you need a government person to, to direct some of these people to answer some of their questions about signage and oh, yeah. know, we have taxation all that. and whatever, all these different questions that come up. I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing. The planning and zoning has shown that are flexible over the last three to five years. They're, mm -hmm. they're, Lynn is willing to work with everyone we're doing everything we can. So I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing and to get over this current time. And I know one of the things that Dan has always felt very strongly about is, is uh, Dan, do you want to talk about your, your sort of spring cleanup idea? Oh, just a couple of, and I know that we're talking really about future and trying to get these call empty businesses are filled up, but we have some work to do get the downtown to look clean. If you look at some of the windows, a lot of the stores aren't even following the current direction on how to do I, I If anybody walked by Ski and Sport and see all the post-it notes on the inside of the window, the, the packing tape holding up signs, mm -hmm. um, little things like just making everybody be standardized on how the window should look even the crosswalks, having the crosswalks all painted and fresh and crisp and the sidewalks clean, all those things um, add to the overall ambiance and feel of the downtown. So there's little things that we can do that are um, important and doing the things that we talked about, you know, tonight is coming up with some type of standard that we can agree on to make baby steps to create some kind of uniformity Mm -hmm. that is appropriate and professional that that is uh, representative of what we want our town to look like mm -hmm. one I thought agree. i had about um empty storefronts um especially when the weather was nice during the pandemic yep. um, there was so much foot traffic and granted there wasn't a lot of people going into stores but there was a lot of foot traffic people wanted to be down downtown to see other people with their masks on right yep. so um I love the benches downtown. I, I love to uh, walk a little bit, sit a little bit, enjoy my coffee, get up and walk a little bit more. And I'm wondering if at, at whether the town invests in a, a few more benches and benches could be put in front of some of the empty storefronts to generate activity. Um, I know there's no one to take care of them if the landlord's absentee, but um, I don't know. I, I think that that streetscape and the and the walking traffic is so, as much as we're talking about what the buildings look like, right. yep. it's really about the people, isn't it, ultimately, and, and people walking in the community. It's funny, there's two benches um, over on South Avenue, right? When you, um, Heather Gaudio side and then the other side, people are always sitting in those benches. They really do get used quite a bit. And those are all benches that are donated. Um, people make donations and Tiger orders them and we place them around, but that's a good point. I'll, I'll ask Tiger if he's got any plans to, to purchase any more, if he's had any interest. 
There used to be landscaping companies who would create, uh, you know, baskets or whatever in front of buildings, you know, with their sign in it. Yep. Um, and I know one of them went away. Uh, it was a firm out of Westport. Um, but, you know, that's an opportunity uh, as well when the, when the weather is nicer for sure. The other thing Laura and I talked about is, um, you know, Laura's obviously now trying to think of any other ways, fundraising activities that, that she can put to, put in place. And um, one of the ones, Dan, that's so successful every year for the chamber is the, the garland on the lamppost at the, at the holiday time. Um, and so we talked about that and could that be brought over into a spring theme? Could there be on some of the lampposts, you know, some daffodil vine wrapped with, with lights or something like that just to change it up and it could be a fundraising opportunity again for the chamber. So it was something we talked about. The, 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 the actual uh, lampposts have become very valuable um, territory that people between the bows and the ribbons and, and things like that. So we could use them as much as we can. All right, well, I uh, thank you all these groups and I just, uh, we'll just keep working on it. If again, uh, all of you that have ins with some of these folks that have some artwork that we might wanna consider, if we could just start collecting that so that we can then, um, you know, have a look and see if we can come up with something that might work and get it going. But I think you're right, it needs messaging, needs to be consistent. Go from there. I had one woman call me up and she said she has an attic full of old, um, um, old um, wallpaper. <laughs> she said, did we want that for some of the windows? <laughs> so she said, I have the prettiest little, it's blueberries. It's little blueberries that I had all in my kitchen. <laughs> um, the next item is just a playhouse update. Um, just wanted to let you all know that, as you do know, uh, Bowtie um, asked to be released of the rest of their lease. Uh, that became effective December 31st. Right now, what we're doing is, and the, the encouraging news is that we've had a lot of interest. Uh, we've had residents call up who say, can I help? What do you need? We've had a couple of organizations call. We think what we're hearing uh, most from folks is that they do want it to remain a theater, a movie theater slash possibly a live theater, but something along those lines. The other thing that we learned was that um, all of the rent over the years has accrued into a fund where there's about $850,000 that can be used. There's definitely some deferred maintenance that needs to happen um, at the theater right now. Uh, so this is a good time with it being vacant. So right now what we're doing is we're just meeting with anybody and everybody who has an idea and uh, telling them all to you know, come back to us if they wanna present sort of a business plan, if you will. We're hoping that in a, in a month or two, we might um, you know, find one that, that can, can actually um, that we can work with and we think would be um, profitable because that's always obviously a big part of this. So we're working on that and uh, we will come back to you. I just wanted you to know if anybody asks you and, and if you know of anybody, send them our way. Uh, we've had a lot of great ideas. Um, the budget, I pulled, um, so this is not our budget. This is the first selectman's budget that is earmarked for economic development. And what happens is anything that we have recommended uh, to the Board of Selectmen for funding comes from us, we recommend, and then they decide, the Board of Selectmen decides if they would like to, um, to go forward with it. So as of today, uh, we have spent, of a $30,000 budget, we have spent 22,000. So we, we don't, no one says we have to spend everything, but again, on July 1st, the, the current budget has asked for another 30,000 starting July 1, 2021. Um, so, and in terms of requests for money, we've got um, the Live New Canaan campaign has asked us if we would support them again. Uh, we've, we've supported them with one round of the $10,000. I think that's been a very I've been very impressed with that effort. I think they've done a great job. I think COVID helped the real estate market tremendously. Uh, but in the meantime, um, you know, we could make further recommendations to the Board of Selectmen. We've got Devin, who we heard from tonight. Uh, Kevin and I did have a conversation today just in terms of, of sort of future funding. And we do feel that we want to, we've spent a lot of time, effort, resources on sort of the cultural, and we are the Tourism and Economic Development Commission advisory committee, um, but should that should we really now focus more on the downtown? I mean, that seems to be the biggest void right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering what your thoughts are, given that we have a couple of requests before us, and 
um, if anybody has any ideas or thoughts that we would, what we might want to do if we uh, propose asking for the remainder of our economic development budget. So, so we have 8,000 mm -hmm. left. Yeah. And we've so we, got a, requ a request for a thousand for the movie. And how much does uh, Live, Live New Canaan want? 10? Yeah. But, you know. Well, no, that would be for July, the next budget, because we've already. Uh... Isn't there 10 in the original 22 that's been spent? Yeah. Yes. And we okay. gave you know, 79, 10. Um, and then Gina Federico um, was a piece of that as well for October for Design. So. So I think we definitely want to leave some money set aside for this, wind, you know, this our, our wallpaper uh, for the um, for for the empty storefronts. The other I, I thing that I forgot to mention was um, back in a I think it was 2010, planning and zoning. Uh, the town planner at the time, Steve Kleppen, received a grant to do a market demand study. Uh, that was a time when we were really seeing a lot of vacancies. Everything was happening, as you know, at 2010. And um, so we, he did that. He received a grant, I think it was $75,000. I still refer back to that document often, but I'm going to ask Lynn to look and see if there's anything, any monies available or any grants available for something like that again. I think we could use that right now. I think COVID is making it so hard for any of us to figure out what it's gonna be like. and spent the last couple of days working on the town budget and um, you know the schools it's very hard but I think a I think a full gap analysis would be helpful right now so uh, I meant to mention that earlier but I'll follow up with that that'll be part of my responsibilities going forward Tucker could, could you clarify you said to spend money on the downtown going forward what did you mean by that I just meant more focused on the downtown versus more of the cultural aspects. Um, if it's if it's the wallpaper or if it's uh, okay. you know, sidewalk, maybe sidewalk uh, you know things like that. I don't, I don't really know other than yeah benches. I don't really know other than more on okay. the actual physical downtown. Got it. We don't have to decide this tonight. You know we've we've got time. Mm -hmm. but we do have a, a couple of requests before us, um, and I don't think we have to decide on any of those right now. Other than you know Devin would love to get going on her. 250 people organizations at a thousand dollars each so what is that that's my dog <laughs> oh <it's funny. laughs> can, can i just clarify something though just in terms of what you and kevin were talking about wouldn't you say what isn't the ten thousand each year to live new canaan isn't that for the downtown or is that not for the downtown it's for the town i mean it was really geared for real estate right i mean okay okay um, you know, I um, don't want to be a sour grape, but I feel like we've given them a launching pad yeah. and, and I, I feel like the real estate market has had one of its best years. Um, and I think there's a lot of other deserving organizations um, out there. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I don't want mean to dry up their entire Request, but ten thousand dollars is such a big piece of right. our budget that I'd like to see it distributed amongst other groups um, going forward, and maybe smaller grants. Um, I also think that um, October for Design, because of the pandemic, was a much scaled down um, event than was ever hoped for, and with with the film and all of the planning that happened this year under very difficult circumstances now being able to be applied to next year, I think we are in a position to really make that something special. And I know it's cultural and it's not downtown, but maybe we can think about how to, how to connect it to the downtown more. And maybe that should be one of the goals. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and I think, and I think, Amanda, to your point that the original conception was that there was going to be a lot of downtown engagement. Right. And then because of the pandemic, we couldn't do it. That said, I just want 
you know, t October for Design is not asking for more money. That the that the money that that you all allocated or we all allocated to that is basically you're going to see the fruit of that this year. So the website, the infrastructure, the stuff that was spent, um, you know, is still there and is all ready to go for okay. October 2021. That's great. I agree with you, Amanda. Yeah. No, I think it's very PRable and will bring people to downtown. So. I think that and, and other events we should look at. I think that movie is amazing that Devin's doing. I think that's going to be great. Well, I guess then I would pose the question on, on the movie because that seems to be the only real request that we have in front of us that might need action tonight. Um, if somebody wanted to make a motion to, to approve and then we can have further discussion or we can I take the time to, to... Oh, Amanda moves to approve. Do we have a second? Well, do we want to limit it to 1,000? I think so. I, I, I think maybe we can come back and, uh, well, she has a three, what was it, a three month deadline? No, it's, it's 18. She hasn't even launched this. So yeah. this is what's going to happen is that after our event on the 12th, where we're showing her video, um, then we're going to help her to do a big push to try and get the 250 people. It just seemed like because it would be so good for the town to have this film in so many ways that if TDAC wanted to be the kickoff partner to start the, the ask for the 250, that would be that would be obviously great. Yeah, I think it's a great use of our our funds. Uh, it's a pretty low, uh, you know, a, a 30th of the total budget um, or I guess we have $8,000 left part of last year's budget. Um, it seems like a, a meaningful contribution. So who was the second on that? I think it was Alan. I think, Alan, I think so too. Um, any discussion? Anybody feel strongly one way or the other? Do we want to call the vote then? And again, remember, this is, I'm not, there's no guarantees here. This is to recommend to the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. that they would support this. Um, and if they do, I would ask Devin to probably come back at a board of selectmen meeting and show them what we were thinking about. All right, then I guess I'll call the question uh, in favor of supporting it at $1,000. Um, Aye. Show of hands. All right, looks like it was unanimous. We will, I will present that to them tomorrow. Um, other business, Fred, you've hung in with us all night long. You've got anything to share? I think it's terrific what you guys are doing. And I think the idea of supporting what Devin's doing, I, I've known about Devin's film forever, obviously. And the fact that it's getting organized so that her fundraising, instead of being scattered, which is what it's been up to now, as she's gone after fundraising for this film and other films and all the rest of it, to have it organized around New Canaan with your backing is gonna make a huge difference I'm going to contribute a thousand dollars. I'd like to be the first contributor to a thousand dollars for that. And we already beat you. So we beat you, Fred. We beat you. <laughs> well, I mean, it takes us back to you know when we first started this and the whole A plus U magazine and all of that. I mean, it's really what got us going. Karen, you guys have a couple of things coming up at Grace Farms, right? Yeah, like um, programs. Well, just some new initiatives, things that are happening. I saw the, the face mask uh, announcement. Well, Fred, do you have yours with you? You modeled it better than anybody. I do. Where I is it? <laughs> it's Maybe it's really right here. tied right into all of this. I know I should have mine, shouldn't I? Um, but yes, the Design for Freedom movement launched um, a couple weeks ago now. It's really exciting and gaining some traction. This is really a brainchild of Sharon's and now in collaboration with 60 experts in the design architecture um, engineering space, all of whom from a variety of backgrounds from philanthropy to civil engineers um, are really looking at how to remove slavery from the built environment. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself launched a report, um, which is actually excellent. I'm not an architecture person, but I found it so fascinating. And all of these, as we all consider how we vote with our dollars and vote with our choices around building and from everything from our clothing and sustainability to um, the items we purchase in our home to how we build our homes. 
And so she was able to present to John Engel's call on Tuesday, which was great, a lot of town support there. But an extension of that was a partnership with Herman Miller and these masks that are just really exquisite. Um, the, they're made of a silver material um, that has some antimicrobial elements to it. So a level of safety, but they're also just beautiful. They mirror the river building's roof and, um, and a partnership with a place like Herman Miller, of course, that has deep connections with New Canaan, with Debbie Proust, um, but also a company that has commitments to and proof of concept around um, ethical and sustainably sourced materials and for them to partner with us is really profound. So it's been a really exciting pathway for Grace Farms to sort of have these big global thoughts and then be able to action it into local action and bring along our community members who have been so immensely supportive in purchasing the masks and wearing them. And um, we, we hope that that is sort of how this movement goes and actually how all the work with Grace Farms goes. I'm really thinking about it right now in terms of our food relief effort. So sort of we've been doing all of this work over the last 10 months of delivering meals across the state of Connecticut. Now, um, you know, um, 70, 70,000 people have been served. And, and so how, how can we action that from what we've done to really becoming more of this sustainable initiative? And it all is incredibly supported and catalyzed by New Canaan. So it's really, it's really a profound moment. So I feel, I continue to feel grateful to be part of it. I know Sharon feels incredibly grateful for the support of, of New Canaan. And, um, and it's, it's fun to see again and again, this, this place reinvent itself uh, with and in and, and linking arms with all of, all of you and, and the community members. So yeah, it's fun. Well done. Um, our next meeting is February 25th, uh, which I can't believe it, right? We're already talking February, the end of February. I'd love to think that between now and then um, that we get some more work done uh, with, our, with our working groups. Um, and then um, just stay in touch, you know, via email, send me what you need. And then we'll, we'll get these groups together and make some decisions. And does anybody else have anything to add? Laura, everything going along at the chamber? Plugging right along, double thumbs up. Okay. I found the mask. Here it is. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Hey. Oh, looks great on you, Fred. Who would have thought a year ago that we'd be sitting here donning masks and oh. talking about all yeah. of this? It's crazy. Uh, Tucker, I just want to mention one thing. Um, on February 18th or December 18th, we got 10 inches of snow. I think the town and public works deserve a lot of credit. And I hope the restaurateurs appreciate what the guys did at public works, mm -hmm. taking down all the barriers before the storm, removing all the snow overnight, and then having the barriers back up so that the restaurants um, would be back up and running. So I hope they appreciate, yeah. everybody appreciates everything that the town and particularly public works has done to keep the restaurant tours um, up and running on their sidewalk dining. Brock, thank you for saying that. Um, yes, and I think they're, they're, we're talking about some significant snow next week and I was speaking with Mose today and he was saying that he might have to do that again. Forest Street act, uh, voluntarily asked us to remove all of the barriers. Um, they found it's very shady down there as opposed to being on Elm Street and you get the warmth of the sun. So they felt that they were better served by having the barriers be removed. Laura and I have been attending the police commission every month, um, outdoor dining. The governor, I guess, extended uh, now through April. So I, I was driving through town the other night, last Friday night, and people were eating outside. I, I know, mean, it's crazy. Fun. But they're doing it and it and it's great. I mean, the, you know, the heater's out there and people are dressing for it. So um, I think that's, you're right. Uh, they do, they're paying a lot of attention to making sure that they can do everything they can do to make sure that the businesses are supported and certainly the restaurants are benefiting from that. So thank you for that. And they'll do it again if they have to. We get the best DPW crew, sure. none in our town. And we have to continue to buy local. Buy local. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everyone calls it work. Everyone's working at home now. And I heard someone say the other day, no, everyone's living at work. <laughs> so uh, um, oh, one other announcement from the chamber is we're uh, transitioning from a very manual gift card program to an electric gift card program. Uh, that's going to be great. I'm signing up stores. I've got some sponsors for it. We're really excited. Fairfield, it's a national company called Yifty and they're servicing 200 uh, towns and cities across the country, including Nashville. Fairfield 
got theirs up and running in fourth quarter and sold $42,000 uh, worth of, of local gift certificates that can, their e-gift cards, you, you know, merchandise them through your phone because uh, like a, you know, a MasterCard number comes up and that those numbers can only be used in those stores uh, designated. Uh, so it'll take me a little while to get the stores all lined up, but then we'll do a big public announcement. But uh, it's going to allow more stores to participate, restaurants to participate who couldn't handle kind of the manual IOU, which is basically what our current uh, chamber gift certificates are. Um, but we did, we sold 5,000, which was great. Uh, and I'm, every day I'm dropping a check off to a, to a store um, to reimburse them for what's, what's being redeemed. So, so I stay tuned all, for more I, on that. Laura, that's great. I mean, that was always a dream of ours and you and I investigated all of it and there was open loop and closed loop. So now I think it's kind of just a Venmo system basically, uh, but yep. it's working. Um, the other thing is you probably all read uh, that the town has gone to free parking for employees of downtown businesses in an effort to you know, really get them off of the streets. And that seems to be going very well. We got an update from Stacy from the parking department recently. And she said, it's very well received. A lot of people are, buying these permits for free they have to um they have to confirm that they're actually an employee of a business and it's the center street lot and the locust lot and they're just very grateful she says a number of them come in and say just thank you thank you for doing this so again it's an effort to to get those people off of you know we always want to leave our prime parking for our prime customers and um that's i think we've really made some headway on that so it's good news all right, anybody else got anything before we uh, wrap it up? It's been a long week. I don't know about any of you, it's been a long week, right? Um, thank you all very much. I'm excited. I, I, I hope by our February meeting, you know, we'll have uh, more to come on all of this, but um, thank you for what you're doing and just stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Motion to thank adjourn. Dan, yeah. second, Greg. Got it? Okay. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Good night. Night. Night.